I'm Todd Kelly from Kelly Racing. You may have heard the great news just after Bathurst that we're going to Mustangs for next year. There's a huge amount of work to be done. We're now at the start of November and we're just getting all the CAD drawings in for the bodywork of the car and also have our own engine program underway. So a lot to do and a lot has already happened since Bathurst. So let's go down and have a look at what the guys have been up to. This is our fabrication department at Kelly Racing. So we need to arrive at the first round next year with two complete Mustangs and a spare car. This is a Nissan Ultimate that we had in stock ready to go as a spare chassis but not built. So we're about two weeks into this whole project now. Ed has completely stripped the car of anything to do with Nissan. So as you can see here on the floor, that's basically what makes this V8 supercar a Nissan Altima. These are all the spe specific panels that come off a Nissan and you've got the exact same panels in every Nissan Altima road car. So they get stitched onto the roll cage and then all of our composite bodywork goes over the top of these panels. So we're uh, in the week of Sandan now and we expect delivery of all of the Mustang specific panels this weekend at the track so we can start converting this cage into a Mustang first thing next week. As you can see, this whole car is sitting in primer and the bits that are shiny or starting to go rusty are the parts where the Nissan bodywork was attached. So there's not a terrible amount of attachment between the road car parts and the cage, but still um, quite strong. So the differences between the Altima and the Mustang are fairly evident here. You can see all the parts that aren't painted are the parts that we've had to remove sheet metal. So the Altima had a very forward lower part of the windscreen. So the windscreen on the Altima was you know, around this area, but on the Mustang, it's a lot further back. So all of these panels are specific to the Nissan are now off. A new windscreen wiper location needs to be jigged up and welded into the frame. Then all the forward panels get welded on as soon as we receive them and this car will then go back into the paint shop. So this car will actually be the second Mustang And the first one's here on the jig. So there's a, quite a lot of work to do here to finish the car of the future chassis before the Mustang parts go on. But this is a purpose built from scratch car that hasn't yet been designated to a Nissan or a Ford or a Holden. So this will go straight into a Mustang. We won't have to cut any of those panels off whatsoever. Both of these cars need to be finished and uh, in the paint shop ready for build as soon as we get back from Newcastle later this year. I'm uh, Ben, I'm the head Fabby here at um, Kelly Racing and this is the um, new chassis that we've had on the go uh, all season just on the side which uh, is fortunate enough to be the first Mustang. This piece here is the, uh, is the first part that's, that's going to turn it from uh, car of the future to, uh, to Mustangs. So this piece here is, uh, is going to be the mount for the front guard um, and also attaches the, the body side to, uh, to the car. So let's get into it. Given we won't have our very own Kelly Racing spec Ford engine until probably Christmas, I've been quite lucky to pick up this Stone Brothers engine from Jimmy Stone. So this is a 2012 spec engine, not, not current. Um, 
It's done a bit of racing. It's got about four and a half thousand kilometres on it, but it's a perfect engine for us to start testing all of our parts on on the dyno. So um, big difference from a 2012 engine to a car of the future spec engine is it's sump mounted. So as you'll see here, this, uh, this old SBR engine's got the engine mounts off the block, which uh, they all traditionally had back in those days. So we have to design a sump to replace this tin one that also picks up the engine mounting in the cross member. So the design shop's flat out on that. One of the other changes since 2012 is you'll see this engine's got a distributor, which is pretty cool. A little bit old school though. Um, it obviously drives down onto the camshaft, but in all the current race engines, as was with the Nissan, we actually have a, a little trigger picking up that cam position and coil packs along the, the valve cover and only little short leads into the spark plug. So another thing we'll have to change on our engines and for the purpose of the dyno testing, we'll actually put a little sensor in here, leave the distributor in place for now and convert this engine to a coil pack engine. We've got the engine here, had a good look at it all. The guys in the engine shop have had the heads off it. We've scanned all the ports and things so we can get our own test pistons done. They've checked everything out given it's done a few miles and made sure that it'll, it'll serve us well on the dyno. So on the front here, we've got water pumps and all the pulley stacks. All of that stuff is really specific to the Stone Brothers car. So we've got to go through and redesign everything to suit our car and, uh, and our engine. Uh, one of those things is the exhaust system as well. So you can see here I've rounded up uh, a few bits and pieces from our, our dyno cell. So over the years we've collected quite an assortment of different primary uh, pipes and secondary systems through our, our Holden engine and our Nissan engine. So all of that stuff's back uh, out of the cobwebs in here and I'm just adapting things to, to make systems for the, for the Ford. It's one of those things that the exhaust system is quite specific to the to the ports in the cylinder head and the inlet manifold so there's nothing that you can just go and either buy or design without testing unfortunately we need to get our manifold onto this engine which will carry over to our actual race spec engines and then start testing all the different exhaust systems and it is a lot of trial and error to get that balance right between inlet manifold and exhaust to get the right amount of power and also the power where we want it. So there'll be quite a lot of hours on the dyno running through all those things. And we really need all of that stuff locked away so they can get the CAD drawings done of our actual exhaust to fit in the car and uh, have everything ready for mid-December or um, probably after Christmas to when we get our very own engine done. We should have then the car system done and uh, January we need to be bolting our full spec Kelly racing engine into a car. So a little bit to do here. So you've seen what has to be done on the engine in the engine shop. This is where all the work actually happens. They've got all of our CAD stations with Autodesk software and everything that you've seen is actually almost finished being drawn now. So we'll go through and have a look where we're up to. So this is Nikki, one of our star designers. She's been in charge of all of the ancillaries on the front of the engine. So power steering pump, uh, water pump locations, all the pulley stacks, uh, alternator. So getting everything to line up and making all the brackets and uh, working out how to hold everything. So we only get one go at this and if she doesn't get this right, this could fall off at uh, the first race and lose all pressure or water pump belt and it can be all over. So a lot of pressure to get this right first up. And none of this stuff you can just go and buy off the shelf. This is all specific to our car and specific to our engine. So unfortunately, a huge amount of work has to be done in very little time. All this stuff has to be released into the machine shop, material ordered, and then um, parts made, and hopefully have everything arrive right at the same time at the start of December so we can assemble our first engine. Around the corner here, we have uh, Nick working on a piston. So again, we need to have this piston finalised uh, for both the test engine and our race spec. And in order to get enough engines to get to the first race, at this point, we actually need to commit to um, buying four or five sets of pistons. So if there's any mistakes in the pistons, we could be in big trouble. And Geo over here is working on the water pump. Again, something that we can't just walk up to a shop and buy specific to our engine. Um, we have to put crank uh, cam trigger sensors and bits and pieces in it and make it all fit and work in with what Nikki's doing with the, the pulley system. 
slight change from the engines. We've got Phil working on the chassis side, so uh, we're, we're about to receive all of those steel panels that we spoke about earlier to go on the car. So Phil's put all of those in, in CAD here on Autodesk and he's preparing all the jigs that we require for the fabrication department to get all of those inner panels welded onto the cage in the exact right position so it's a straightforward build when we got all the composite panels to go over those. This is one of the bigger jobs, um, quite time consuming. Dylan is working on the sump, so there's a lot that goes into a sump. Um, pretty critical for the, the horsepower, how the oil's recovered out of the bottom of the engine. Obviously the oil pressure, there's little piston squirters to keep the pistons as cool as possible with, with oil, having all those positioned right, oil pump right. Again, Dylan has to work in with Nikki to make sure that all of those pulleys line up. And the sump in this case is uh, extra important because it actually mounts the engine onto the cross member. So not only is this a um, means of getting oil out of the engine, it's also a structural part, holds a 200 kilo engine up um, on its own, along with a couple of little uh, brackets on the back of the bell housing. And you see what these cars do, bouncing over curbs and getting a real hard time. So this is a, a pretty important part to get right. And again, um, no pressure Dylan, but once this part's made, if there's any issues with it, there physically won't be enough time to have another crack at it and, uh, and make any changes. And the last bit that we've got going on here is Nath on the bell housing. So this is our current Nissan bell housing, full billet bell housing in a few different sections. A little like the airbox, we're hoping to use the majority of the airbox, but just change the part that mates to the engine. So uh, Nath currently just working on this first stage of the bell housing which we can just unbolt and swap out. So this will be specific to the Ford block, but we should be able to use the rest of the bell housing as it stands. So save a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of extra effort in machining. So the pressure's on here, a little bit of uh, time left to get all these drawings done, and the machine shop's ready to go and waiting for drawings. Thanks for joining us on a tour through Kelly Racing to look at our Mustang progress. As you saw, there's a lot of work being done on the design phase of the engine, and on the car, but we don't yet have any physical parts. So stay tuned for the next episode to see all of those designs go into the machine shop and hopefully have some parts to show you. Click the button below to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss the next episode.